So when we, and, and this is a group discussion, this is not me teaching the book, to, right? Mm -hmm. So when we have our, our group discussion, we'll have to kind of speak up so we can all be heard on the, on the camera kind of scenario. So how many of y'all are ready to leave now? Yeah. That's, a yeah. Just to shy people. That's what he tells us. I think it looks like a, I think it's one of those little projector screen kind of things, you know? <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Um, the, and, the, and the plan really is uh, to go until 7.30 time frame-ish. It just depends on us in our discussion. And obviously tonight's the first night, so it'll be a little challenging because some of you are just getting books today. Um, and uh, you're not ready for the pop quiz, uh, but I think we'll I think we'll manage we'll manage well. So since this is a study, hey Roger, you want one of these? There you go, there you go. Um, and uh, let me let, since it's a study on prayer, let me have a word of prayer. So let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for. Uh, the ways in which you have already been with us, the ways in which you have opened our eyes uh, to your presence, the ways in which you have invited us to, to hear the sounds uh, that surround us and to, to cause us to pause for a moment and just say, Lord, here I am. Uh, your servant is listening. Uh, may tonight be a time that uh, encourages us uh, and challenges us to... Um, to walk closer with you uh, and to experience a deeper uh, intimacy with you as we discover the power of uh, prayer and, uh, and we hear uh, Tyler's impressions and his thoughts on uh, what it means to have um, this deep walk with you through the power of prayer. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, my name's Tim, and uh, I I came across. I'm trying to remember how I came across this book. That would have been helpful to remember that. How did I come across this book? Well, I'm gonna waste too much time trying to remember. <laughs> how did I come across? I don't know if I heard it on a podcast um, or something like that. But I I have a I have a special interest in spiritual formation. I have a spirit. Uh, I also have a special. Uh, flavor for mystics kinds of things and uh, so the book was very it was attractive to me and I think I think I heard him in an interview and he sounded like somebody that um, if I was a drinking person uh, that he'd be fun to hang out with um, and uh, someone that I, I could relate to the stories that are in this in, in here were very uh, felt very familiar in the ways in which he expressed himself. And uh, I knew that I was doing a sermon series on prayer, so that was probably the other part of that was like just gathering different resources uh, and thought this would be fun and uh, purchased the books for the staff and the leadership team um, as a gift because I just found as you read this uh, that it could be a very transformative experience for you uh, in discovering prayer. I think a lot of us get hung up on prayer and we think it's like, you know, uh, this deep, you know, I got to say things a certain way and, and you know, hold my left hand up while I'm, you know, that Verizon commercial, can you hear me now kind of thing. Um, and I think this is a really good, a good intro. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing how it impacts you uh, and uh, the ways in which you hear from God throughout the time we're together. So We can do this the old-fashioned way and go around the room, or you can just pipe up. Okay. <laughs> All right, Deb. Okay. Well, Deb's ready. Okay, Deb's ready. Go ahead, Deb. Um, Debbie, um, I think that I'd be somewhere in the middle Okay. Um, right now. Uh, between monks and yes, yeah, so that makes I you hope. a model or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this was interesting to me because I mean, I pray. I think most of us do. I want to be more intentional, and I want to know that it's okay that I don't have this flowery kind of 
language that other people, you know, just flows out of their mouths, you know, not so much with me. Mm -hmm. um, but I need to be okay with that. Um, so I'm hoping that I get some of that out of this book. Good. Nice. Well, I'm David, and uh, I was I do a devotion every morning out of four four devotional books, and today, <coughs> bing 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 bing, they all hit me. Interestingly enough, and I don't know if the authors all work together or not, but it was for the seventeenth. Yes, today. Yeah, and, your bummer uh, if it was the wrong day, huh? <laughs> and what they were saying, all of them were saying collectively was, think about God, or in Jesus all day long, no matter what you're doing. You know, always always be conscious of that. Mm -hmm. And carry him with you, you know, wherever you go. And I I tried that today, but you know, gee, I get so get so busy on things I don't think about it, you know. And then I thought I got to this little section here of Saints, sleepwalkers and skeptics. I think I must be a sleepwalker. You know, because I'll be, I'll be going on doing something. I walk two and a half miles every morning, and I'm thinking, okay, Lord, come on, let's go for a walk. You know, mm -hmm. Where can I see you or what you're doing? And, but then pretty soon I'd be thinking, well, I haven't got enough steps yet. You know, and it just pretty soon I'm off in my own little world again, mm. and trying to get back to what that, those books were calling me to do. So I got a lot of work to do. All right, well, good. Thanks. Well, for me, it was kind of an answer to prayer because at the beginning of the year, I usually pick out a couple of books that I'm going to work on in my quiet time. And I was wondering what I would find next. And also, I had committed myself to praying for the church and for other things and other people. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling like I was getting really bored with how I was praying. <laughs> It seemed like I was saying the same things over and over. Yeah. And I was really happy to see that we were going to have something to teach us to pray like monks. I don't have any trouble li living like fools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, on Tuesday night, I was going to put a sign on the door that says, <laughs> Monks and Fools meet in one, 112 or 111. Kind of thing there is. So, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, how most I put people it love in my the title. <laughs> What's that, Tina? And that's how I put it in my appointment book. Yeah, the monks and fools. Yeah, yeah, the monks and fools gathering. Yeah. Well, you know, the the idea behind that is that uh, we're we're you know how often um, folks are called fools for Christ, right? And and the foolishness of the gospel uh, kind of context. And so, um, but it but it's a great marketing title as well uh, in that effect. So yeah, well, great. Thanks, Elaine. Hi. <laughs> I'm Tim. Another Tim. <laughs> this is Tim. Speak for yourself. I guess. <laughs> of course you can. Of course I can. Oh, yeah. right, anyway, um, actually two things. Um, I, I know in my morning devotions, um, scripture is usually a constant, but if I do something for very long the same way, I get bored and start getting distracted. So I'm always <coughs> changing somewhat the flow of, of my time with God. So this was intriguing to me. Um, maybe I'm a monkle. You know, so. but, uh, but the other thing is, um, just the candy and I decided we really want to uh, enter into this community and get to know people and, uh, and see what happens out of that. Do you guys know Tim? No. So Tim was the, uh, well, was a district superintendent. He was also the pastor. Take my name in vain. At, at, at Trinity United Methodist uh, Church, and um, was recently retired, and 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 uh, so you you got David. He retired, and, and I left. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it, you know we've become friends over the last uh, three three years since I've been here, and and uh, worked together on the district operations team and, and things like that. So. And he's been constantly wondering what the heck the cabinet was thinking and the board and approving me for ordination and things along those lines. So, <laughs> so he's actually a secret spy. <laughs> was it the right that's that's for? Oh, that's right. I forgot the stuff is being recorded. <laughs> so we're, we're excited. So Candy, you want to? Sure, yeah, I'm Candy. Yeah, yeah. And my main reason for coming was community, you know. 
I thought, another book on prayer? Oh, my oh, goodness. Yes. And, but then I read it, and I thought, wow, I like what he's saying, and it, it does appeal to me. I, I get lost. I start, mm. and I, you know, so uh, I'm looking forward to that yeah. and to, to meet and then talking with folks. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Brenda, and <clears throat> like you, I'm hoping to find ways to be more focused. I have a tendency to <clears throat> trail off with what I have to do today. It just kind of creeps in, and before I know it, it's like, okay, where was I? You guys might be a little flustered at the end of this thing when you discover that he's going to kind of invite you to be just okay, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really? I mean, I've run into step one and then go to step two. and Yeah, yeah. So that'll be good. Good. Thanks, Brenda. Getting down to the. What attracted me, um, of course, the title Monks Bulls. I read the reviews and they were sensational reviews, and I can never get enough on prayer. Mm. Uh, so I thought this was uh, wonderful. It was a great time and it was over Zoom. So thank you, Lord. Yes. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, it's good because as you're saying, Pastor, there is distance. And I've been attending the church. I got baptized in the church quite some time ago. And so I'm in New York now, but I can still see your sermons. I get your jokes and I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're one of one. <laughs> <laughs> what are you hoping to get out of the book study, uh, Simone? Um, <clears throat> we, you know, we have trials and tribulations, et cetera, and so forth. And I'm trying to learn how to better commune with my father, my God, mm -hmm. better talk to him. Uh, I mean, I do it, but I, I, hey, it's all, you can always learn something new. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That's, Great. I'm looking forward to this. Great. Thanks, Simone. Hey, I'm Marcia. Good evening, everyone. And um, I'm not sure if I'm a monk or a fool yet. Uh, <laughs> I, um, to be honest with you, I, I crave to be really close to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Word tells us that he inhabits the praises of his people, and mm -hmm. I think part of prayer and praise go together. And I know I can't get it right. Those people who know me know he's always in the pursuit of excellence. And so um, <coughs> I recently, well, a number of years ago, read a book by Paul Miller on a praying life. Mm -hmm. And it helped me deepen my prayer life. And this book was actually given to me. Mm -hmm. But I love his fresh approach to it. And um, on page, I think it's five. The first full paragraph at the very end, he says, most of us get knee deep in the Christian life, discover that the water feels fine, and stop there. We never swim in the depths of the divine intimacy Jesus wants for us. Mm. This book is an invitation to swim. <laughs> <coughs> and, um, I don't want to be a knee deep. Yeah. All right, you guys get to play rock, scissor, paper, Cynthia, Tina. So, okay, all right. Um, so, um, well, I'm Tina Mora. Many of you know that I'm a retired librarian and a forever librarian. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I love the title um, and uh, Pastor Tim you know, brought it to my attention. And um, I don't, you know, I, I don't consider myself really good at prayer. Um, it's not that I don't pray, um, but, you know, I don't, sometimes I just don't feel that I have the, the gift that others do for it. Mm -hmm. And I like to do better. That's great. Yeah. I, I hope, I hope that, that when you finish the book, you'll be like, ah, I'm a lot better prayer than I thought I was. <laughs> one can hope <laughs> yeah no i think i think you will i think you will yeah i like the title of the uh <laughs> book and uh yes i can be very foolish sometimes so yeah. it caught my eye and um i know i like to do something new for the new year and i like to pray um i have people i pray for regularly 
Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, I used to feel that I had to do it a certain way, but lately I don't. And I just do it like I just talk to God. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe I'm not doing this right. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's something I'm missing. But um, so maybe that's what I want to check out. You okay. know, how am I doing? Good. So that's Good. that's my thing. Thank you. Well, it's because the end of this table has yet to go, and this table. <laughs> okay, I'm Denise, um, and it's like a deposition, right? <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to be on that end. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm always interested in in the various uh, studies that Tim does. Um, <clears throat> learning more and growing in my my faith and spirituality and, and I'm fascinated I you know I read the first chapter and um, introduction and you know I like the idea of prayer being in presence and um, I need that more and I certainly need to improve and want to improve my prayer life so I hope this will be good great Thank you. Hey, Brockways, you're up. Brockways, you're up. <laughs> I'm Ken. It's my wife, Barb. You can remember that easily, Avery. Anyway. <laughs> Ken and Barbie. Don't say that, because it's really I'm Barb. not Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, during my time as the lay leader, it seemed to me like many Sundays, it was just, kind of wrote A, B, C, D, and there was no um, new thinking or new ways of expressing, expressing things. So um, we, we ordered, we did order the book. It's going to come I probably some bought them year. All, so. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> Unless you want to be a member, it will come <laughs> some year. Uh -oh. but, but so we haven't looked at it at all, but sure. we're just, uh, interested in seeing you know where this goes and perhaps a new approach yeah very good good all right good to have you guys so danielle or roger either one i'll go okay great ladies won't go first on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, i um a couple of years ago was hit with the idea of what is it to mean to pray and i found your reference in matthew mm -hmm. in my study bible directed me there. Mm. And I'm fascinated in that example. It's fairly straightforward and simple. Mm. There's mm. not a lot of elaboration. It's just, right. you know, don't make it complicated. But then <laughs> later you'll see him at Gethsemane where he's, I guess, sweating from mm. the mm. outpouring of prayer that he's just trying. So mm. he's physically engaged as well as spiritually engaged. Mm. And I was kind of fascinated by that. Can we come become physically engaged in a similar fashion when we're praying. Yeah. I mean, what gives us that mm -hmm. internal intensity that allows for that to take place? Total fear, total yeah. anger, total love? Yeah. What, what emotion seems to drive that? That's a great question, and we'll, we'll discuss that, I think, as we go along. But, I mean, the, it, it really is the invitation to show up completely as you are. You know, if you go back, I mean, the, the, if you're really studying prayer, a good place is always to go in Psalms. And look at the Psalms. I mean, you talk about a whole litany of ups and downs, and 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 and, and the invitation. That's that's what you'll discover. The invitation is, come as you are. So, I mean, if you were to if you were to read through, uh, you know, my Bible oftentimes serves as a journal where I've got notes in there, and sometimes I laugh and I'm like, you know, you know, if anybody were to read my Bible after I'm out, they'd be like, is this guy what's what's the problem with that guy? Because he's He's got lots of questions in there, and like, what's that about? And you know, so, but it's just, it's just part of my my experience with God is to show up with who I am. God created me, so, um, and so there's times you're gonna have that full, you know, full on, you know, experience with God, and then there'll be times where you're like butterfly, <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, and God's gonna just smile and say, yeah, I'm I'm here. Yeah, so good. Thanks, Roger. All right.
Um, I'm Danielle. Um, and I want to improve my prayer life because right now it's kind of. <laughs> Thank God the car didn't hit me. That's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, but I, what in my brain? Because I haven't done a book club before. This is going to be fun. My in my brain for a book bl- 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 club is uh, we say, hey, we're going to look at the introduction. We're going to look at chapter one, and then you say, hey, I read this sentence and it was really kind of cool, and I'd like to share. Is that kind of how the rules are? I know. I know. <laughs> Right. I think some of these headings that like not that they're not the first part, but praise you can, prayer posture, adoration, confession, mm-hmm. intercession, petition. Maybe we just make those as the focus of, of that week. You know, that opens up the possibility to think in a lot of other ways. Yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about, you know, creating controversy amongst this group here. Um, it, <laughs> but I want to, but what I do want to do is somehow be able to capture the opportunity that if you've read something and you're like, hey, I'd really, you know, I'd really like for us to talk about this, that you have that freedom yeah. to do that, right? Because I can come through and tell you, you know, hey, I underlined this thought. I'm curious what you think about this. And, and that's not going to be the problem. Uh, the other thing I'll be doing for you is um, creating um, basically a, a book summary. Uh, it'll be like in a PowerPoint kind of thing that, that you'll have uh, at the end um, that will be kind of capturing some main thoughts. So if you want to go back, again, it's, uh, it's a resource I'm going to give to you. It's a resource I want to put on the website so folks have access to that, that kind of thing. So, all right. Okay. Cool. So in your readings, if you've been able to read, anything stand out that you've underlined or marked or highlighted that you want to uh, throw out? I liked on um, page three, we talked about the mystery in the middle. Oh, okay. I, got I, I never really thought about the middle. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. always worried about the beginning. The mm-hmm. end I'm pretty good with. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not really thought about the middle. Um, that's where all the good stuff is, I think. And he's trying to say here that the middle is where all our answers about prayer are littered. Um, And, you know, if God is all powerful, that means he accomplishes what he wants when he wants, right? Right. So why does he need me to ask? Mm. Mm. And um, What, what do you think about that? Well, I, I think that uh, praying is a conversation with God, mm-hmm. and I need to communicate with him and have a relationship with him in order for him to know what I'm concerned about, who I'm concerned about, whom I'm praying for, and I want to build upon mm-hmm. communication relationship. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, and so what, what Tyler is talking about in there is what, what Cynthia was just talking about was, so I have, I have this prayer and then I'm waiting for God's response. So what's happening in the middle in that time frame? And the way he lines that for us is it says, really starts with the question, is prayer really necessary? Um, if if uh, God's all knowing. Um, Good. Yeah, I don't think prayer is necessary, not for God, because he can do it all. Mm. Um, but I think um, he wants us, he's giving us, it's a gift to participate. And, uh, and so that, you know, we can get in the dance, like the dance between the Holy Spirit, Jesus and God. And he wants us part, to be part of that dance, which is, which is beautiful. Um, it gives us our purpose. A purpose, um, and again, it's, it's a way to keep the conversation going to develop a relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 well, and potentially to change us. Right. It's kind of it's an invitation to go on a trip. 
you know, if you want to think about that and, and that God's not so much interested in the destination, but in the journey. And, and it's, so the question, you know, if, if, if I'm praying, if I'm praying for something or asking for something, the question may come back to us, well, what kind of person do I need to become in order to experience what it is I'm asking for, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying for my, my business to be successful, right? Or I'm praying for my church to grow, right? Or I'm praying for uh, this person to experience healing. Uh, part, of the, part of the conversation that God's inviting us into or the dance as Janice was just inviting us is what what steps do I need to to uh, become right? What kind of dancer do I? I'm trying to stay with that analogy. What kind of dancer do I need to become? Is is that a country dance? Is that a polka dance? Is that right? Um, and it, it, what what character needs to be developed within me? Uh, if if uh, you know if I'm asking for success in my business or or praying for success in the growth of a church or something along that that line, and so. It's not just me, uh, you know, saying what my prayer is, and then waiting for God to answer, but but God is inviting us to to live into the answer along the way. Um, I mean, I I know enough about the people here that every one of you have experienced things that are very very difficult, um, and um, I. I'm experiencing something difficult right now with, uh, and with, you know, without making comparisons in any way, I was really impressed by something Sunel Chenoweth said one time when she was having back surgery. And she said that, uh, well, I mean, of course she prayed for the pain to be gone, but she also prayed to be able to withstand the pain. Um, you know, and, you know, I thought that was kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, there's an interesting quote in here by um, to deal Rabbi, with it, yeah. by Rabbi Heschel. Prayer is our humble answer to the inconceivable surprise of living. Right, and so to, to go with what you were just saying, Tina, and what what Sunel had shared it meant to you is like, so as I pray, you know that the pain may cease, or whatever. The invitation for God is from God is how will you live in the midst of that right yeah. um and and that uh our humble answer a lot of times is i don't know how right uh well, I think prayer gives us hope and expectancy yes and it challenges our hope and our expectancy right because yeah. if the prayer is delayed if the if the pain becomes more intense, right? Uh, yeah. Any number of those things. It, what that's what I'm saying. That's the journey that God is inviting us on. Is is who will I become in the process? There's there's part of the question is who do I need to become, but also who will I become in that time of prayer? Exactly. What 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 choices are you making? to withstand whatever it is you're going through mm -hmm. you know you the, yeah i mean you can choose the dark path or the light pa path to, to to go and thank god that we we can we have that option and i think some of that comes from speaking the word or speaking out to to the to god as opposed to keeping everything, everything in your mind because when you live alone like i do you know, it's like, okay, I can talk about blah, blah, blah. But when you're living with someone and you're walking around, depend upon who they are, and you're speaking aloud like that, and I guess that's why they say find a prayer room, because then you feel judged or you're maybe not saying anything or saying what you want to say. And the person who is there might put a hindrance on it. But I would think still you have to be vocal with with what you pray about good i thought one thing i liked was um jesus was asked by his disciples teach us to pray and he started praying that was his answer yeah what do you think about that well i mean i've been told you know that it's like a model the the lord's prayer is a model for us but that's another way to look at it i i think that's very cool yeah. just do it yeah 
And, and, and I, I mentioned it a, a couple of weeks ago. I mean, the, the model that he gives is actually the model that they've been praying all their life. It's a very mm -hmm. similar words. So you could say, well, Jesus just plagiarized, you know, the, the prayer that they had been taught, but what they were really going after was we know the words we've heard the words, but what we want is the, what's going on in the heart. There's something that's happening when you pray, you're saying the same exact words that we say for, you know, why, why, why do we have an impact when we, we say the Lord's prayer, but then when we sing the Lord's prayer, something moves differently in our spirit, right? Uh, if you have a candlelight service and you sing the Lord's prayer, or if you've gone on a, on a, an outing and you gather in a circle and you sing the Lord's prayer and you lift the hands, what's happening there? What may, they're the same words. What's happening? Music touches the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, and, I mean, and community touches the soul. Right. The soul's being touched in some, some different way. It's the same exact words, right? But it's also what's happening in that moment is you're you're having to stop. Like if you go start singing the Lord's Prayer, you have to kind of stop. You can't because there's a different rhythm to it. There's a different mm -hmm. there's a melody to it. There's a harmony. You know, you can't you can't just say our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right. You have to stop and catch up with the rhythm and it slows you down. And it, so it, it breaks up the pattern for you. And because it's broken up the pattern, it creates this holy ground experience for you. Right. <laughs> so with what Tina was just saying, when Jesus was was giving the, you know, the Lord's prayer, I mean, it's not, I mean, we call it the Lord's prayer, but I mean, it really is. Here's the model. Speaking of that, I don't know if you, uh, have been to our website, but uh, if you go to our website under resources, there's a prayer guide, a personal prayer guide mm -hmm. that includes some some uh, some thoughts of like the prayer of Jabez, um, the Lord's prayer, and things like that that you can download. But but when we stop and and realize that hey, this is a model for me. So in that first part, where we say our Father, right? If you just stop on the word R, O U R, right? I mean, right off the bat, where the model is this is community. This is not individual. When I enter into the prayer, I'm I'm invited to come into this prayer, bringing other people with me, or other people are joining with me in that in that process. And so, uh, Simone, you were you were commenting earlier about you know, being alone in your apartment, right? And so yes. that prayer, that prayer automatically reminds me, I'm not alone, right? I'm, I'm with other people. And and then the other part, you know, our father, well, what about those people who feel fatherless? Mm -hmm. How do they say our father, right? Well, if we stop and we think about that and we realize, well, God has already claimed to be the father of the fatherless, right? Well, what about, you know, you know, when I hear the word father, I think about the abuse, those kind of things. Well, well, God has said, I am, you know, I'm the model for what fatherhood should look like. So, I mean, that's just those two words, mm -hmm. right? And we stop and we, and we, so if we realize it's not a, it's not a formula that Jesus has given to us. It's a, it's a model to take us into a deeper walk. And obviously, you know, the, the word father is translated, you know, as Abba, Papa, mm -hmm. Daddy, whatever that word that you use that that creates that level of, of intimacy, um, you know, with with the Heavenly Father kind of thing. So, so that's, yeah, that's the other piece of that that's always interesting. So imagine if a little guy, a little, a little girl, comes to you and says teach me how to ride a bike what's your how do you do that do you take them to the not not picking on you tina but do you take them to the library and check out a book no no i have to say yeah you google well, we might YouTube. do that that afterwards yeah you google youtube and say here watch this video no right? 
No. No, you walk alongside them. <laughs> yeah, you take them out and you put them on a bike and you say, here's how you do it. Right? You might model for them the first time where you get on a bike and and pedal and show the balance and all that kind of stuff. But but it's that it's that kind of experience. Same thing. How do I drive a car? Well, you you know, how do I swim? All those kind of things. Uh, so it makes sense that Jesus would say to them, how do how do we teach us how to pray? Right. Um, he did. He didn't go back and say, well, look what look at the words that Abraham said or look at the the prayers of David. He he just said, here's how you do it. And he and they began to pray. And so I, I think it's great, Tina, that you picked up on that. You saw that. So the invitation to swim. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's Marcy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like I like swimming uh, in pools that are heated. Right. It's a little, I, little chilly. I feel now, that but, yeah. I want to be safe. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? This, because I mean, he talks about why don't we pray, and one of the first things he talks about is this this anxiety kind of scenario. So, d is does prayer for us lead us to that that Jaws experience? You know, you just you feel like I'm going to go swimming, but I'm afraid I might get taken out. Or what what does that mean to you when it, when you read that 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 comment that, that Marcy was leading us to I mean, that was on what page five you said mm -hmm. that's you know just to read again it says most of us go get about knee deep in the Christian life discover that the water feels fine and stop there we never swim in the depths of the divine intimacy Jesus won for us this book is an invitation to swim so part of, part of the question I think we have to answer is that it says most of us get about knee-deep in the Christian life. Well, what is, how would you describe a knee-deep Christian life? Control. You, have, you want to keep control. So your feet are still on solid ground. You want to, you want to feel that you have the control mm -hmm. over what's happening in your life. So how does that, how does that show up in our, in our Christian life? Probably all kinds of ways. You know, it'd probably be where you're at at that time. Okay. If you're going to allow God in, you're probably you're going to hold Him back. Mm -hmm. But if you're open, okay. All right. When you first became a Christian, or th before I move on, anybody want to add anything to that? Or I would say for me, I think um, when when I'm really stressed or in a crisis, then um, I don't <laughs> care whether I'm good or bad or whatever. I'm just going, hey, you're going go. For it. But um, when I'm not under stress it, with God, even now, I kind of I just want to be the good boy, mm -hmm. you know. So I just kind of hide the shadow stuff, and, and yeah, kind of shallow. Well, I, I was, and I'll invite you guys to comment on this and think about it. when I, when I first became a Christian, um, I I started teaching a class, and then I went from there to Florida Southern College and from there while I was uh, so I became a Christian in 1987 I started at Florida Southern in 1989 uh, and I was invited to pastor my first church in 1990 and anybody see a problem with that yeah. <laughs> and, but, but part of that part of that I, I went swimming real quickly right because to me, it was like it was a great adventure. I had no idea what I was getting into. And I was pastoring a church in Plant City, Florida. Um, and it's still, a, it's still a student pastor church today. It's on Cherry Street. Uh, and, uh, you didn't do it in? No. And, and, that, and honestly, that was a church that kind of recognized its mission was to be a student pastor church, sort of. Um, but I, my, my theology... And preaching and all those kind of things was being influenced uh, by Florida Southern College, Wade Willis and, and, and those folks. And I thought that, you know, they, they've been Christians longer than I've been Christians. I've been Christian. I've only one person. So, uh, you know, and, um, and so I would, I would hear what they were saying and I would go and begin to present. And uh, my presentation, you know, I'm not even sure I can call it sermons at that point in time, but my, you know, my attempt at preaching uh, landed me in a conversation with the district superintendent in Tampa. Uh, his initials were CC. I don't know if that helps you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only reason I didn't say it is because it's being recorded kind of thing. Well, 
what, uh, what my district superintendent did at that time sat me down and gave me this explanation about rocking the boat, uh, which was, hey, probably a good idea for you not to rock the boat. That's when I say, do you have that Jaws theme song going off in your head? When you're just a student that's just beginning the ordination process, hasn't even gone to seminary, and you're meeting with a district superintendent, and you come out of a, a, an experience of uh, respecting authority figures and things like that, they sound like Jaws to you. I'm talking about dun dun, right? And so at that point, you're you're like, I'm not sure it's safe to swim in these waters anymore because I don't know what to do. And so what I'm, at, I'm inviting you to think about is, so you, you can begin a pathway. Uh, I remember uh, at Florida Southern, you know, doing prayers in public for the first time. Again, you know, early as a Christian. And Doug Hallman, I can say his name because he's a dear friend of mine, would, would talk to me about, you know, you say Jesus a whole lot in your prayer. <laughs> Sorry. And what became conscious for me is that someone else was listening to my public prayer and now they were critiquing me about my public <laughs> prayer, right? And he was not, he wasn't doing it to be judgmental. He was just trying to help me, right? Uh, but again, it was like, ooh, I, I'm, I'm in uncharted water here. And so the question for us is, inv the invitation for us is to think back, you didn't start out in knee deep water. When you first, be I mean, when you first became a Christian, I don't care if it was at confirmation or if it was at camp or if it was as an adult or anything, there, the invitation that my life is going to be different puts you on an adventure. And then something happened along the way that caused you to say, ooh, this is a little scary, right? Think about the disciples going out and uh, Jesus sends them out and, you know, and, they're, and they're casting out demons and, and doing all kinds of cool things. And they come back and they're like, dude, this really works. And then they come across the, what we know as the, the child, you know, the, the demon-possessed child. But it's, we, we would define that as the epileptic seizure, right? And why couldn't we? You know? uh, and that conversation about prayer kind of thing. But, but what would happen in their psyche at that moment, right? Uh, so the invitation for us is once again um, to, to, to see prayer as to go back to the place where we were kind of through caution to the wind, right? That's a great insight. Yeah. That's good. To, yeah. Ooh, did you catch that? <laughs> That's a great insight. <laughs> it was a mistake, Lord. I don't know. It's a, so, but yeah, I think that's, you know, it's a great invitation. And, and it says here that you're knee-deep in the Christian life. Mm -hmm. And the Christian life is made up of multiple aspects and areas. Mm -hmm. And for many of us, it's okay to come to church mm -hmm. and to volunteer and to do those things. And we see the Christian life as a doing thing. Mm -hmm. We always talk about what kind of church do we want to be known as, or what kind of, um, <coughs> what do people know about us, whether it's this church, or I'm not talking about any particular church, just in general. And so it becomes a outward thing. Mm -hmm. And in the Christian life, we sometimes neglect the inward thing. And all of us, you know, you have seasons in your life when you're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mm -hmm. got this. Then there are other days you wake up and you're like, hello, who is this here? And am I even in touch with that, that important part? And so when he talks about being knee deep in the Christian life, we get so far and we feel comfortable with ourselves and we don't throw caution to the wind. Mm -hmm. We don't have that full abandon and emptying of self to allow, you know, science folks know that a vacuum is created, something needs to sure, fill it. Sure. And if there is something filled already, nothing else can get in that place. And so w when we are at that place where we feel comfortable, and I'm the master of that, when I'm in control, mm -hmm. I, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Because I can see it and I know where things are going. The minute you give that abandon, it becomes an uncomfortable right. place. Yeah. It's difficult to... 
another another thought for us as well is think about um, prayers that you might say on behalf of someone else. So I'm thinking, you know, as a pastor, uh, going into a hospital room, being with a mom who's got a young a young child who's you know facing a, a, a terminal illness, and they're asking you to pray. And there's a part of you that's like, I don't want to give that person false hope, right? I, I, and so, and 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 so you kind of hedge your prayer with the wonderful words, "Not my will, if it be your will," right? And and so part, yeah. But so that's why I said before, and this idea is that you you know, first of all, you have to uh, you have to trust God's heart for you, so that when you know, going back and saying, you know, why if 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 a if your child asked you for, you know, a fish, would you give them, you know, scorpion. a scorpion, you know, or those those kind. And so, but those those are hard. Those are hard places, and you're like, I'm I'm not sure I want to walk into that to that pool. Um, well, you know, we um, there's so much that we talk about in. Bible study and church about sacrifice and if you're going to be a good disciple you need to be willing to give it all and mm -hmm. blah 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 and, and so you know when you say my life is yours do with me what you want that's a really frightening thing to say Yeah. Um, especially if you you know are thinking about the future and am I going to have enough money and am I going to be able to care for my family and all that other kind of stuff so um, but that's what I <clears throat> that's what I meant when I said that to you mm -hmm. a couple of sermons ago. You said something about God wanting the best for you. Mm -hmm. I do this all the time, right? I cry at anything. One at each end of the table. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, here, I'm here for Kate Marr. So, you know, I do. I cry at everything. But um, so that just really it felt right, and it sounded good. Yeah. And, but it does hard. Yeah. 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 That that's that's the piece, that's the piece. So I think that will invite us to go back. Um, and throw caution to the wind when it comes to our prayer life in the sense of saying, you know, I trust that, that Abba, Daddy, Papa, whatever words you want to use, um, really wants the best for me, you know. And so when we are getting hung up, that's really the invitation for us to go back and say, you know, where, where am I at in this, this trust walk with God? You remember what I said, you know, at the end of 2022, I wanted you to be able to look back and say, have I, have I grown in my capacity to trust God? Well, the, the, the challenge about that, right, is we have to ask ourselves, well, did I put myself in places, you know, that's going to cause me to have to trust God? You know, I, I, could, I could talk all the time, you know, with my kids as I could say, you know, uh, trust me, if you jump off the edge of the pool, I will catch you. Right, uh, but until they get to the edge of the pool, they can always say, "Oh, I know Dad. Try I know Dad will catch me," but they don't know until they literally do that. And so we have to look back and say, "Well, what? Where were the times that I was invited to go swimming?" And here's the cool part: the, the invitations are always there. I, I mean, recently we made these hygiene kits, right? And and they're and and so. Some folks are like, I can make the hygiene kit, but man, that's a rolling down my window and ask and, and giving out the kit. That's that's a huge, that's a huge swim for me, right? God doesn't stop loving you if you don't roll down the window. God will just continue to invite, you know, and 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 so you you just you just keep you know processing that. And say eventually I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna. I'm going to dive. I'm going to go for the swim or whatever the case may be. I keep so. taking kits and giving them away. Yeah. Well, some people, it's easy. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, you know, but I know for, for other, I'm just using that as a, as a recent example because, yeah. I mean, that's a huge, for a lot of people, that's a huge yeah. pull up to, you know, what happens if the light turns green just as I'm about to, 
you know, give this. And I got somebody honking behind. It's probably the pastor of that church. It's always you know, <laughs> honking at me, like, you know, so, right? But it's that kind of that kind of thing. So cool. Mm. All right. Um, any other thoughts before we? Well, I I was thinking that this my church up in Prospect Harbor, Maine, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm gone for six months, and they copy me on everything. And lately there was this email back and forth to some people about a community group that wanted to use the church. And should we charge them $50? And they, they asked if we could do any refreshments. And I, I want, the lady said, I, do, I don't feel like we should do that. So I copied everybody. And I said, as your pastor, I really hope that you could let the community use this. You have plenty of money. Money is not an issue. I said, secondly, you are such a hospitable group to all of us who are part of the church. Isn't this a wonderful outreach to provide some refreshments for the people who are not part of the church? And who knows down the road, one of those people as a community member might need the church, and mm -hmm. they might think of us, you know, and we can be up there for them. And I didn't get one answer back. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really anxious to find out what they do. Hmm. So I'm going to call him after that and ask, <laughs> and ask somebody, you know, what did you do? You know, just to find out. Because I do think that that's part of my responsibility, hmm. is to help them think through those things, mm -hmm. you know, from a, a deeper Christian experience, sure. not just sure. a knee-deep experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's, if we... Um, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, on page six... Uh -huh. um, I don't know why this just really stuck out to me down at the bottom when he says, don't read the book for its content, mm. read its content for its practices. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what one sentence to just kind of help you rethink yeah. about how I'm going to read this whole book. Um, and I just, I thought, I haven't even started it yet. And, and I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, I just thought that that was a really, um, that was just something that really jumped out at me. And yeah. I hope that I can say it. Well, if you look at the end of each chapter, so on page 30, for example, actually on page 28, uh, you'll see that he gives you practice. Kind of, so for those that were looking for, for, for those kinds of structured things, those are, those are there. Um, well, it just helps you think that it, just isn't, it isn't just a book. Right. It, and it's also not a, I wouldn't read this as a textbook in the sense of uh, here's how to do these things. Right. Um, right. It really, I mean, I don't know how you teach someone how to swim except get them in the water. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, you know, like I said before, I mean, the disciples already knew how to pray. They were trying to figure out how do we have this intimate prayer life like Jesus had kind of thing. So, so Abraham was taken back when he was asked to go first born. Yeah, yeah. That's a heavy. Yeah. You're not walking in the water anymore. No, you sure aren't. No. You sure aren't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and many many people have uh, have wrestled with that. That uh, lot lots of theologians have written on that. And so yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the the invitation for us would be think about what would be equivalent to an Isaac for me. Mm. You know, um, because I think I think it, it, throughout our lives we are invited to come to an altar and, and sacrifice an Isaac. Um, and how many, how many of us are willing to take you know, uh, an Isaac and place it on the altar and believe that God will provide? Yeah, you know, I'm not talking, you know. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm laughing because uh, one of my- one, Any potential new member to this church? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just, well, well, I was laughing because one of the Saturday, yeah, one of the, one of the Saturday snapshots involved me throwing a knife, and, and Matthew wasn't too happy about it. So, so there, and he's sitting there saying, "Well, he said Isaac. He didn't say Matthew." So that's that's not. A, but it is. But it, that is the invitation, though. I mean, is you know, in that case, we're, you're you're talking about child sacrifices at that point. But for us, you know, historically, that's what's happening there. But it's an invitation for us to think about. What are the Isaacs in my life? You know, if God came to us and said, "Hey, I want you to take your car and sacrifice it and be foot mobile for the rest of your life," Lord, did, uh, what? 
right? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah. an easy one. I, I, you know, there there are harder ones. Than uh, that. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, sure. yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just yeah. the. It, it is the. That's the invitation. Is I mean, for each one of us, the Isaac would be different. <laughs> you know, and then, uh, and then what I would say, you know, is. If 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 your answer is ah I'm not ready. God doesn't say, well, I'm going to stop being your God until you're ready. Right. That becomes part of your prayer life. It's like, Lord, I, I, I want to be. There's lots of, again, and if you were reading in my Bible, I'd read something like, i say, Lord, you know, I'm not there, but I'd like to be. Yeah. You know, can that be part of my prayer walk? And, and, uh, and those, because I think, you know, you know, God said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And, uh, and then I know, that when I say no, God says, okay, I love you, I'm patient with you, because one day your no should be yes, because I know what's best for you. I, you know, yeah. I want the best for you, but in the meantime, right now, I'm going to give you the space to, to grow and make mistakes, and you know, the prodigal son had the opportunity to go down the path. I say to my Marines all the time, you know, sometimes you need to experience being the prodigal son. We all need to have that experience of going out on that path and turn around. I said, the, 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 the challenge, what's that? Done. <laughs> yeah. A few hundred times. I said, <laughs> the, cha- the challenge is, is that you don't always know if, you've made the, if you will make the turnaround at the right time. Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, you know, our days are, are numbered in lots of different ways. But, but uh, there's your, I think your walk as a Christian is extremely powerful when you've experienced um, that kind of forgiveness, that kind of, you know, love. You know. Something that really is interesting to Pastor Tim, um, you know, you're talking about Isaac, and I know what my Isaacs are. Mm. Mm. They're Gisela Dominic, <laughs> literally. And, you know, these guys know a couple of years ago, Giselle. Miss Will, she had a brain tumor. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really opened my eyes to the fact that I trusted God with just about everything mm-hmm. except those two children that he just gave me. And I had the hardest time mm-hmm. in just surrendering. Yeah. You know, I remember one morning, uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I was up on Google looking up treatments and my cell phone lit up, and it was my sister calling from Wisconsin, and all she said was, get off of Google. (laughs) 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 She said, who says I'm on Google? She's like, who answers their phone at 2 o'clock in the morning? Mm. (laughs) So bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, you know? And I kind of just broke down and and cried, and Mm. she says to me, are you trusting that God is going to see her and you through this? Mm. And I had another girlfriend who say to me, God doesn't have grandchildren, you know, so she was his first. <laughs> but it really opened my eyes to the fact, and even now, yeah. even in my prayer life, I pray so desperately for them. And it's almost like I want to tell him what to do mm-hmm. when it comes mm-hmm. to their lives. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that will be a perpetual struggle for me, mm-hmm. because they really are mm. my eyes that, you know, people know that Sydney get crazy, mess with my children. Mm-hmm. Um, a different person shows up, and I have to say to myself, like, whoa, come on now. Yeah. So it's it's hard. <laughs> so I'm a I'm a Trinitarian. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And sometimes our language in the Bible can make it difficult for us. But the reason I'm saying that is that's also an invitation for us when we say, you know, the Isaacs would be my children and when you look at the words you know the Abraham the description this is Abraham's beloved son is you know and then we look at the language right we look at the language about Jesus right and and so that anguish is is also an invitation again into the heart and the character of God to think how much how much anguish and pain you feel if you had to sacrifice right and so you you have a common bond with God, right? God, God understands, 
you know. And that's, you know, you have a common bond, and at the same time, it's a reminder, I'm not God. God is God, right? Because um, there may be a point in our times that we'd say, mm, I'll take the bullet, but not my, not my kids, mm. right? And, and I know that's kind of hard, because like I said, that's why I gave you the, the statement at the beginning, I'm a Trinitarian, right? Because the language is difficult for us to get all that. But, but God says, you know, um, this is the full depth of my love for you. Right. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. Well, I find with me, I, I accept that God can say yes or no to my prayer. Or not yet. But when he says mm-hmm. not yet or wait, I'm horrible at waiting. Just yeah. horrible. And I think sometimes he does it to me just because he knows how bad it is for me. Mm-hmm. And he wants me to get better. What did they waiting. say? If you pray for patience, God will give you plenty of opportunities. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I usually joke around with somebody in the store, and I'm like, you prayed for patience today, didn't you? <laughs> so, but you're getting another line. Cause <laughs> I had a student at Eastern once, and she said, oh, if it's these children, I'm just going to pray for patience. I'm like, no, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Why is that all the, all the prayer God always answers? You know? like, yeah. yeah. I don't want to move on to, to a new section because we're getting close to the end of the time, but I do want to, so with that, I'll give us a chance just to kind of wrap up and if any thoughts that you want to, uh, what we would have talked about is why don't we pray. We'll just pick that up when we, the next time we, so those that have their books now, you can, you can still read through chapter one and uh, those that uh, have read, you can, you can, you can read, you can read ahead. Uh, speaking of that, um, the last Tuesday of this month, uh, January 31st, we won't be meeting. Um, and you can kind of plan the last Tuesday of every month, we won't be meeting. Uh, and so I've built that into the schedule for us uh, to finish, I think it's like April 18th, so that 10 weeks kind of thing. Um, obviously, you can see that we could, th- this could be a whole year uh, of discussion kind of scenario. So it's, it's, I kind of looked at the chapters. I think there's 10 chapters in here and went that route. I just like his fresh approach. He has a nice fresh approach to writing. Yeah. Makes it easy to like it. Yeah, it's fun. It's an easy, I mean, you, you, you're you going to finish one chapter and want to keep on reading in the process. So, yeah, it's very good. Why, why pray in secret? Yeah, yeah. So anybody want to take a stab at that? Why Why pray in secret? <laughs> this is my test to see if they listened to me yesterday. It's only a day, well, two days removed, right? Yeah. I wasn't here. That's no excuse. It's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, why? Why? I mean, if you hadn't heard, if you hadn't heard the sermon on on Tuesday, why would you think? Why? Why would the invitation be pray in secret? It's a personal thing between you and God, and when you're praying publicly, you're saying, oh, look at me, aren't I sanctimonious and religious, and, you know, don't I have a good relationship with God, and mm-hmm. boastful, and bragging, and it's all biblical. the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about asking for prayer at the restaurant before you eat? Yeah. yeah. You're not doing it to be boastful, right? but yeah. that's not a secret, but I think it's probably the right thing to do at the same mm-hmm. time. Why would you, why do you think he probably gave us, I mean, not probably, why, why did he give us that, you know, when you pray, go in a closet and close the door and probably just pee? Probably the Pharisees and some of the other Jewish leaders, what they were doing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how they were behaving. Yeah. And that, I think that certainly is part of that. I think um, one addition that I add is that it's sometimes when we're in the closet, you know, we're, we've, it's an intentional way for us to remove distractions, Right. And so, because uh, I, what I said on Sundays, like if you were driving your car, um, do you do you offer a prayer? Or you know, if you were getting ready to eat a meal, do you offer a prayer? Right? Or if you're at a store and you've got to deal with a rude, you know, person standing in line that's praying for patience, and and you know, and you offer up a prayer, is that a prayer? Because Jesus had in, in Matthew six gives you this kind of specific, distru- you know, and. So what was Jesus talking about? What was that? And I think part of that is, yes, don't, 
don't become you know a religious hypocrite in that sense but also just understanding how challenging it is for us to be distracted and uh, and so when you so when you enter into a prayer closet that means you're you're taking on a a specific prayer posture right and so one of the things I said that that that, that statement is not about a place it's about a posture you know Although, you know, I thought it interesting, like on 25, 26, I think, in here, he talks about pray as you can uh -huh. and, and really threw the door open. You know, if, if the only time you can do it is when you're walking, do it right. then. If, right. When you're driving, do it then. And, right. You know. Yeah, I wasn't against it. That's the reason I gave you the, the assignment was is that every time you hear a sound, because I knew very well. In fact, it was ironic that when I invited us to do that, how many of us heard the cell phone that went off? Yeah. <laughs> that was not mine, right? Uh, but it was that, you know, in fact, I, I, might have, I might have actually giggled. I don't know if I was on the thing. But, uh, but that is the, you know, if I can take all that, because we will get lost and say, oh, I'm a, I, I didn't, man, I was going to have five minutes of, of time with God, and it didn't happen. I'm like, well, no, 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 no. Because you'll start to pay attention, and since you'll see God everywhere, and you'll I hear God everywhere. Sunday in church, and I don't remember who the pastor was, but he, he said, I don't know whose phone that is, but it might be God. You better answer it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's kind of like the person who called me today and said, you know, I'm responding to your recent uh, inquiry about disability. <laughs> like, you are, are you? I think you got the wrong number. <laughs> you know, yeah, so. I get a lot of those. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Any, anything else? All right. Well, may you all go uh, in God's grace and God's love. May you experience God's presence. Um, and may tonight be a night in which you experience uh, the rest that God offers to you. Yes. Um, because tomorrow, man, you get to walk with a God who is a great adventurer. Yeah. It's God. Amen? Amen. All right. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Thanks. All right. All right, gang. Yeah.